Welcome, today I have a spring cleaning hack for you that actually could be used at any time of year. But since we are heading into the spring and a lot of people are diving into spring cleaning, I wanted to share it with you today. I also have a special download for you that I will share here just in a little bit. But before we get started, I wanted to take a quick second to introduce myself. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Amanda Willis. I empower families to wellness authentically through biblically rooted principles. And we are so glad that you are here with us. Now, I don't know if you do spring cleaning every year or not. Personally, I have not been a big spring cleaner for a very long time, partly because I really have been a big fan of the Fly Lady cleaning system. I don't know if you're familiar with Fly Lady or not, but an online kind of mentoring system, I think is how she markets it. Um, and it just divides your house into zones. And so every week throughout the year, you're doing different detailed cleaning and decluttering within those zones. So when you get to the spring, it doesn't really seem like you need to do spring cleaning. However, as I have been diving deeper into rhythms, and if you've been following along this channel, you know that that's true. Um, as I have been diving deeper into rhythms in how God has created us and into the seasons and into um, the days and in our cycles, just so many different ways that rhythms overlap, that I am learning to embrace some of those because I am still getting a little bit of an itch. Like, I don't need to do a lot of the quote unquote deep cleaning because like I said, I've been doing a lot of that throughout the year. However, there's still this itch to do something, to clean out, to air out, to allow new things in our home. And so one of the things that I am doing, it happened to be just the right timing. And now I'm like, let's make that a regular spring cleaning thing is um, taking care of our essential oil bottles, the empties. Now, if you are getting rid of your empty essential oil bottles without doing anything to them, friend, you're missing out on a lot of the extra oil and every last ounce that is in here. So you may or may not know that when you get to the bottom of a bottle, when you can no longer get anything to drip out just by holding your bottle upside down or even shaking it, that you can take the reducer off. That's what this is called here on the top. And I like to use the cap but you can use your finger as well. I like to use the cap to squeeze and kind of pinch it and pull it right off. Once that's off, you will find that there's a little bit more oil in there that you can drip out. However, you may also see that there's still some oil sticking to the sides of the bottle that isn't quite enough to get a full drop out of, but you don't necessarily wanna just throw that bottle away. So what I do with my empties is I have a basket I keep in a cabinet and I just toss my empty bottles in there throughout the year. Then, like this year, just a few weeks ago, my basket was overflowing. I was like, it's time to deal with the empties. One of the things that I do with them is to make diffuser water. And unfortunately, I already used all those up. I should have shot the video of that part sooner, but um, all you need for that is an empty mason jar and you fill that with some water and you can pick what size you want and then determine how many bottles you're going to put in based off of that and drop your bottles in there. I like to sort out my empty bottles based on what I think would go well for diffuser blends. So I had a bunch of citrus oils together. I had my Thieves and Purification and Raven and Digize kind of in one. And then I had, you know, my lavender and rutabella bottles even the roll-on bottles i save those and put them in there and then you have empty bottles that are then ready to be recycled because you've used every last bit of them now i'm going to show you how i make some bath salts with my empty bottles here and so i take an empty glass container you could probably do this in plastic i'm just a glass girl and plain unscented epsom salts because friends we don't know the quality of the oil that they use when they do scented ones and frequently it will say fragrance on there and if you know anything about just fragrance lots of things can be hiding in there so i get just the plain dr teals we get these from costco but you could get them from just about anywhere you want the unscented just pure epsom salt there's a chunk in here i'm going to try and break it there we go and then i'm going to dump 
into my glass container. This is a large glass container. Does it say how big it is? No, it just says not frozen. Okay. And I'm going to dump some Epsom salts in here to get a nice layer. Maybe about so to start. Okay, so as you can see, I'm not measuring, this is not exact. This is maybe a half an inch of Epsom salts on the bottom. And then what I do is I open my empty bottles. This one I have kind of put together a blend. I did one that was a raindrop oil, a raindrop bath salt blend. I already used that one up. This is the very last section of assortment of oils that I have kind of put together. And this one is, let's see, I've got patchouli. I'll read them to you as we go. And I'm gonna just take the lid right off and just use whatever you have. So I like to nestle them in and honestly, I scoop up a little bit of the Epsom salt and I shake it in there. So I have patchouli, I have some pan away, because what you're wanting to do is get every last bit of those oils absorbed into either your diffuser water that you're doing or into your Epsom salts. Honestly, the diffuser water is sitting there, it's gonna absorb them. You don't have to nestle anything. <laughs> Just be careful when you drop them into the glass. And I've got Panaway Cool Azul Patchouli Orange. This is the Calm CBD blend. And the same thing on the roller. It's a little trickier, but it will, the roller top will pop off. There we go. Baiba, Jupiflex, whoops, and Panaway. And then sometimes if I have more, if I have a few more bottles, what I'll do is I'll kind of layer them. I'm gonna dump some more Epsom salts on top here. And then I did, even in my last bottle, or in my last batch that I did, I'll show you because I videoed that one. I even used an empty massage oil bottle. It was the Ortho Ease, because I wanted every bit out of that too. And then I shake it and just make sure it's all in there. Oops, this one's sticking up a little bit. There we go. Just like that, I'm gonna pop my lid right on here. This is a snap wire, so it locks just like this. I'm gonna keep it just kind of in a dark place. It doesn't have to be super dark, but I'm just gonna go put this actually in the basket where we keep our Epsom salts in our bathroom and let this sit for about 24 to 48 hours before using it. Then what I do is I dump these directly into the bathtub. Now, depending how big your container is and how much Epsom salt's in there, you might wanna just use half of it. You might wanna use all of it. I like to dump all of this in there. I use a lot of Epsom salts on a regular basis though. And I will dump this in with the bottles and let it kind of get all rinsed out because as you saw, I put some Epsom salts into the bottle. That way it gets all of that extra out of the bottle and then I don't leave the bottles in there when I take the bath, I scoop them out. And the lids, of course, I actually go for the plastic lids first to get those out of my hot bath water. But it, um, then you have nice relaxing Epsom salt bath. You didn't have to use any extra oils. You got to use up all the rest of what was in your jar. And then you can recycle those and you've decluttered all of your extra oil jars a great thing for spring cleaning. Now, if you are new to spring cleaning or you like to spring clean, but you don't have a system and you would like one, I have a special free checklist for you linked in the description below. It's a free download. So be sure you grab your copy of that today. So you have your spring cleaning checklist. It's a 31 day checklist that walks you through 
different areas of your house that you might not have thought about. So it's been very helpful for me as I'm incorporating things that aren't already in my regular fly lady routines. And that way I'm working, that way I'm embracing a little bit more of the season, the seasons and the seasonal rhythms that we were created for. And I get to satisfy and fulfill that itch. I hope it blesses you as well and that it satisfies your spring cleaning itch too. Until next time, friends, take care. Cheers.